Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is our old friend, John Hansen, who's back to talk the history of bodybuilding with us. John, uh, Merry Christmas, and uh, almost uh, I guess it's almost Happy New Year. Yeah, point. Happy New Year, Dave. Looking <laughs> forward to a good New Year the next year. That's right, that's right. You know, it, I see all these guys up north freezing the tuchuses off, and you're from Chicago. You know, you know all about that. And it's so nice to be right. down here in Florida, right? I mean, with the with the warm weather oh, and everything. Beautiful. It's Eighty degrees today. It's unbelievable. I know. I know. It's great. We're going to talk Arnold today. Arnold versus Sergio, because back in the day there was some seriously heated battles and a lot of politics and behind the scenes gossip that went on between the battle between Arnold and Sergio. A lot of people don't know about it. They know who Sergio Oliva Jr. is. Sergio's son, but they don't know the, the father who won two Mr. Olympias and actually beat Arnold at the 1969 Mr. Olympia. So let's take a step back uh, in time, John, to the 60s when you and I are born. And <laughs> first of all, had, give us a little run that of how Sergio became Mr. Olympia. All right, Sergio is from Cuba. He's an immigrant from Cuba. He was on the weightlifting team out there in Cuba. He wanted to get out of Cuba because Fidel Castro came into power. And he was on the weightlifting team, and one time they were in Jamaica for a meet. He actually ran out of the embassy, and he ran towards the American embassy. <laughs> I didn't know he that. He had arm, armed guards chasing him down the street. <laughs> it was crazy. But he, he made it to the American embassy. He said he wanted to uh, you know, be an American citizen. Right. He, he moved to, I believe, Miami, Florida at first. Right. And I think he was starting work as a repairman and everything. And then he finally moved to Chicago. And he moved to Chicago because he said he loved the name Chicago, you know. <laughs> it seems like all the Cuban immigrants went to Miami first. And then they, a yeah. lot of them stay there. You know, I know a lot of Cuban guys that are from Miami. And he decided to go to Chicago just because he liked the name. And he, became a, right, he, right, he right. became a police officer there, right? Yeah, at first he was, uh, I think he was a TV repairman. And then he was oh. working in a butcher shop. Oh, really? In fact, a lot of the contests when he would go to, to uh, pump up, and Sergio was known for pumping up for like three hours. He would do like a three-hour <laughs> workout before he would go on stage. But he would actually wear butcher overalls. That's what he was wearing when he was pumping up, and he would have blood on it and everything. Oh, really? <laughs> like the, like in Rocky. You remember he had the, right, the, the meat right. company uh, on his thing. But That's Sergio funny. was a really, really hard worker. He, would, he was a working man's bodybuilder. He would work all day. Uh, he never was a sponsored athlete. He wasn't like Arnold where he would just lay on the beach all day. Right. He worked an eight hour job and they were usually hard jobs like being a butcher or uh, I think he worked in a foundry for a while. Wow. Um, and then he would go to the gym and he would train two, three hours. Oh my God. <laughs> in gyms that were not air conditioned, you remember, of right. course, or probably cold. And he worked out the Duncan YMCA in Chicago. And he went from being a weightlifter to being a bodybuilder and he had these incredible genetics, probably some of the best genetics to this day in bodybuilding. He's yeah. probably one of the most genetically, if not the most genetically gifted bodybuilders ever. And he probably didn't know what the hell he was doing either, I'm sure. It was probably like, if he actually had some science behind what he did and had the lifestyle like Arnold did, he probably would have been even better, you know? Yeah, he was lucky when he went to the Duncan YMCA, he hooked up with 1966 AAU Mr. America, Bob Guida. And uh. Bob was a really good uh, bodybuilder but he also knew a lot about training, about kinesiology and stuff. And he took Sergio under his wing and he helped him get into bodybuilding. And gotcha. Sergio grew like crazy. But what set Sergio apart was he had this really tiny 27, 28 inch waist. And then he had. Uh oh. I think we lost uh, John there. You know, it's funny because Arnold had a, um, a really small, small waist. Oh, wait, did we got you back? Okay. He had a small waist. You were saying 27 inch waist. And then he had all this, his body parts were incredible. I mean, he had no genetic weak points. Every bodybuilder usually has two or three body parts that are weaker than the rest of them. Yeah. Sergio had no weak body parts. He had everything. He had the chest, Cab. back, shoulders, traps. He had forearms. He had calves, thighs. His legs were huge for back then in the right. 60s. So he was, one, he was a really, really a genetic freak. And he started off competing in the AAU, and he was placing really low because back then the AAU – they, they made you do an interview, and if you did an inter you had to do an interview to show that you would be a good representative for Mr. America. <laughs> Sergio probably was terrible at that. Yeah, yeah of course, he, he spoke broken English, so, and I think it might have been a little prejudiced. They never let black guys win back then in the oh, 60s. Really? 
And so he took uh, like fifth place one time. He took, you know, he was losing the guys that had right. half the physique. Right. The funny thing is, Sergio wasn't even black. He was he was, he was Cuban, Cuban, and right. they thought he was black, probably. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What well, they would, sometimes they would give him the most muscular award, but he right. never won. Right. So finally he made the switch over to the IFBB. So the first year they had the Mr. Olympia was 1965. In 1966, Sergio went over to the IFBB, and he won the Mr. World contest. The Mr. World was more for an international group of competitors. Right. Not many Americans would go in it. Mm -hmm. Because back then, the Mr. Olympia was just starting. So they wouldn't hold the Mr. Olympia by itself. It would be the Mr. Olympia, the Mr. World, right. the Mr. America, and the Mr. Universe all on one night. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Sergio won the 66 uh, uh, Mr. World, and then he went to the Olympia, got fourth place, fourth out of four guys. Who was the but other the three guys? Larry Scott won. Yeah, that was Larry Scott's second win. Who was second and third? Harold Poole and Chuck Sipes. <laughs> I was testing John's uh, knowledge of the, of, of the Olympia. <laughs> So Sergio, obviously, at this point, goes on and gets on the radar of everyone because they realize this guy's a freak. I bet you he never did any cardio, given the fact that he was working so no. hard at his jobs, right? Yeah, exactly. Plus, they were doing three-hour workouts back then, yeah. so nobody was doing cardio back then. <laughs> Isn't that funny? No one thought to sit on a bike or anything like that and pedal, <laughs> burn some extra fat. <laughs> I've got this funny story about Sergio once. Uh, I knew this guy in Chicago. Sergio had some kind of – it was some kind of factory job. And the manager of the plant was a bodybuilding fan. So he, he had heard about Sergio from the magazines. Sure. And when Sergio started working for him, he freaked out. Yeah. So the guy said, I'm going to sneak into the break room when Sergio has his lunch, and I'm going to see what he eats because I want to see what his secrets are to building the great physique. <laughs> so he goes in there, and Sergio's drinking Mountain Dew and eating Twinkies. <laughs> oh, my God. I believe it. Lunch. I believe it. I completely believe it. So when does Sergio finally make like a stance like, and, and, and people realize that he's the guy to beat now? The very next year, he won the Mr. Olympia in 1967. He made so much improvement from 1966 to 67. He went from last place in the Olympia to winning the Olympia because Larry Scott had retired. And then he won it in 68, and nobody went in the contest. Everybody stayed away from it. So That's he, he, he actually was. just stood on stage. They gave him the Mr. Olympia title. He didn't have to right. do anything. He was the only competitor. Chuck Sipes didn't go in it. Harold Poole didn't go in it. Wow. No, no one dared to go up against him because they could see he was such a freak, and he was amazing back then. He was he was so big, but he was really cut too. He had really good muscularity for and, back then. And John, there was no money to be made, so it wasn't like second place was going to be like fifty grand or anything like that. So no yeah, one even wanted to do it. Thousand dollars, yeah, a thousand dollars, and he was happy to get it. I mean, yeah. that was that was big money for him back then. Yeah. So Sergio, who's that? Nowadays, think about it. People got they're like, I want to come in third. I'll get like you know, I'll go home with with a nice paycheck right. myself. So right. times are different back then. So Sergio then does the what sixty nine Olympia, and that's when Arnold first comes on the scene. Yeah, in sixty eight, Arnold came over to America for the first time, and he competed in the IFBB Mister Universe, which was in Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. And he thought he would win easy because Arnold was twenty one years old. He had already won the NABA Mister Universe at twenty. The year before, 1967. 1968, he goes in the professional Navy universe. He wins that. But Arnold was bulky. He was like 250, real bulky, yeah. not ripped at all. And he was all white. He didn't have any tan. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but he still won. He still won the Navy universe. He thought he would come over to America, easily wipe out all the American bodybuilders. Right. So he comes in and he gets beat by a 180-pound Frank Zane. Oh, right, right, right. I remember that. Yeah. He was ripped and tan and looks real good. And Arnold was absolutely devastated. He lost to a guy that he outweighed by 70 pounds. Wow. And um, and then after that, Joe Weider made an, a, a contract with Arnold and made him had him come over to America, uh -huh. move to California, and he put him under contract. Right. And then Arnold, of course, made great improvements. But what's, it, what's crazy about that 68 universe, Sergio guest post at right. that contest. And Arnold got a chance to see Sergio the first time, yeah. and he was blown away by how good this guy was. Right. And I'm friends with uh, Jerry Branham. Jerry Branham used to write for uh, Joe Weider's magazine. Yeah. And Jerry was in California. He moved to California in 68 from Brooklyn, New York. And Jerry told me he went up to Arnold. He, was, he knew Arnold in the gym. And he would go up to him, and he, he showed him a picture of Sergio from winning the 68 Mr. Olympia. And Sergio was doing this pose with his arms out like this. Yeah. And Arnold said... Wow, he's unbelievable. He goes, nobody will ever beat this guy. Really? Yeah, that's what he said in 68. Wow. Interesting. So the following year, um, 
Arnold had made great improvement in that one year from 68 to 69. He went from being a bulky white bodybuilder to being very refined. He lost about 15 pounds. He was about 235. And he goes back to the IFBB Mr. Universe that he lost to Frank Zane. And he wins easily. He even won best legs. He won all the body part yeah. awards and everything. He beat out Rick Wayne. He beat out Franco. And that same night, the Mr. Olympia was being held with the Mr. Universe. So he thought he would go in and beat Sergio pretty easily. Right. And he goes in, and it's him and Sergio. And they're pumping up backstage. Franco's helping Arnold pump up. Sergio's over there with his butcher overalls. <laughs> <laughs> for three hours. <laughs> yeah, for three hours. Sergio takes off his butcher overalls, and he spreads his lats. And Arnold is like, holy shit. <laughs> so he tells Franco, he goes, look at this guy. And Franco tells him, he goes, don't worry about it. It's the lighting in here that makes him look that good. <laughs> Franco was kissing Arnold's ass even back right, then. Right, right. Just trying to keep him pumped up. Yeah. So Arnold goes, come on, Franco, give me a break. It's not the lighting. This guy's unbelievable. So anyways, they had a pose down, They and it was really close. It was a four to three vote. But um, uh, Sergio, I mean, Arnold said that Sergio just psyched him out and blew him away. So yeah. I, I don't think Arnold believed that he could beat Sergio at that point. But he learned a lot, you know, from from competing against him at 69 and losing to him. Did he give him the the famous? We showed the picture before the famous kiss on the cheek. Yeah, he lost he lost the contest, and then he, he gave him a hug and he kissed him on the cheek. And another thing too, another stor funny story is before that contest, Arnold went to <laughs> Chicago and he visited Sergio in 1969. Right. And he stayed with him. He stayed with him at his house with him and his wife. Uh -huh. And he trained with him at the Duncan YMCA because he wanted to know what Sergio was all about. He wanted to learn about this guy. Yeah. And he was amazed by Sergio. I mean, Sergio would do bench presses with 400 pounds for reps easy. <laughs> I mean, this guy was so strong. He would do 10 <laughs> sets of wide grip chin-ups behind the neck for a warm-up. That was the warm-up. Oh, really? Set. Wow. And then they would start the workout. I mean, this guy was an animal in the gym. Right. He was just amazing. Arnold probably realized he had a big lift. He had a big up his game a little bit after seeing what, the way Sergio was. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing is, I wonder what drug Sergio used back then. It was probably like almost nothing, I bet you. Yeah, I, I'm sure they were using Dianabol. That was the most popular yeah. drug. I, I don't know if he was using it all the time or, you know, Decadroblin. Um, whatever basic stuff they had back then. I'll bet you it was it was like a joke. I bet you Sergio was essentially natural probably for the, for what he was. Comparing. Oh yeah, compared to today, I'm sure. <laughs> Even compared to Arnold and those other guys, I bet you he probably was. Yeah, it just goes to show you the incredible genetics he had, Dave. I mean, the, the recovery ability he had. He was training six days a week, three hours a day. Yeah, crazy. Eating shitty diet. Right. And he just kept growing, growing, growing. The guy was just <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable physique. So he, he beats Arnold. Arnold, I heard what Arnold said to him when he when he leaned over and gave him a kiss. Is you'll never beat me again. That that was the, the line I heard. But oh yeah, really? Okay. Yeah. And so he he comes back the following year, right? Nineteen seventy. Yeah. So the following year, um, Arnold trained really hard all year, and he also got Joe Weider to bring over uh, Franco. The so he was able to train with Franco, and they trained really really hard. Arnold knew he had to be bigger in order to beat Sergio, so. Over the summer, or I'm sorry, in the fall, in September, Jim Lorimer calls Arnold at Gold's Gym. And he said, hi, my name's Jim Lorimer. I'm a promoter. I'm putting together this contest in Columbus, Ohio called the Mr. World. I'm holding it with the World Weightlifting Championships, and we're going to have Wide World of Sports out there covering it. I'm inviting all the top bodybuilders to this contest. I want to invite you to the contest. Right. So Arnold said, "What is? It? when is the date? And Jim Lorimer tells him it's on a Sunday, you know, on this weekend in September. And Arnold said, I would love to go, but I can't. I'm competing in the NABA Mr. Universe in London on that Saturday. I can't do it. So Jim Warmer said, if I can arrange plane, uh, plane travel for you to go from London to Columbus the next day, would you do it? And Arnold said, sure. Right. So, Arnold, so Jim Warmer said, go to Heathrow Airport immediate, you know, the next morning on Sunday. Yeah. And he goes, there'll be a plane waiting for you. So he gets to Heathrow Airport. Him, Franco, Dave Draper, and Boyer Co. all boarded this plane. They flew from London to New York. Wow. They got to New York, there was a private jet waiting for them that took them right from New York to Columbus, Ohio. Wow. So they get to the contest, and Sergio said he did not know Arnold was going in that contest. Oh, really? So Sergio was there just to watch the weightlifting championships because Vasily Alexia was going to lift 500 pounds over his head for the very first time. This was a world record. Yeah, yeah, I remember him, yeah. So they got Sergio to go into the contest. Arnold shows up into the contest. <laughs> and 
Arnold beats him for the first time. Right. Now, from what I heard, the lighting at that contest was really bright. And Sergio had one problem. He used to put a lot of oil on his body, a lot of yeah. baby oil. And I guess all the baby oil kind of had a reflection from the lights, and he looked smoother than he was. And Arnold ended up beating Sergio, and Sergio was shocked. Sergio could not believe Arnold beat him. Right, right. So this was a huge win for Arnold because he not only beat Sergio, but he's also interviewed by Wide World of Sports. It's his introduction to the American audience, really. He's sure. 23 years old. And after the contest, what happened back then was all the guys would go out together and eat. You know, they, there was no rivalries. There was no – they were all friends. They were all together. Sure. So all the bodybuilders go out to a restaurant and they're eating. And Sergio goes up to, to Arnold and he says, I can't believe you beat me tonight. <laughs> so Arnold tells him, he goes, Sergio, if you would have been about eight pounds heavier, I never would have been able to beat you. <laughs> oh, like he did the reverse, told him the right. reverse. He goes, if you if you were a little bigger, he goes, I wouldn't have <laughs> <laughs> that, that messed up Sergio for the rest of his career. <laughs> right. So a week later, or no, three weeks later, they had the Mr. Olympia in New York. Of course, Sergio goes back to Chicago, and he does what? He eats more. Yeah. He tries to get bigger. <laughs> he gets smoother. He gets smoother, right. So Sergio and Arnold go on the Olympia. Now, Sergio did something that was kind of stupid, looking back. Um he had just gotten his American citizenship, so he's an American citizen. Right. So as I said, they used to hold the Mr. Olympia with the Mr. Universe, the Mr. World, and the Mr. America. They did it all on one night. Right. So they go to the pre-judging. Sergio shows up with his manager, a guy in a shirt and tie, and they show up, and uh, the manager tells the promoter, he goes, Sergio wants to enter the Mr. America contest. And the promoter goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sergio's a three-time Mr. Olympia. Why would he go? Why, do you, yeah. why would he want to go in the Mr. America? And he said, "Well, he's an American citizen. His mother wants to see him be Mr. America." <laughs> really? All the other Mr. America competitors, like Eddie Giuliani and Mike Katz, they're uh, freaking out. They're like, "What? Yeah. Sergio's going in the contest?" <laughs> so they agree. They're freaking out. They don't know what to do. So they finally agree. They said, "All right, Sergio, how about if we give you an honorary Mr. America title? We'll give you all the trophies." Yeah. And then we'll also have another Mr. America title. And Mike Katz won Mr. America. Oh, there. that's funny. That was like Mike Katz's 400th time trying, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so they do that. And then later on, of course, Sergio and Arnold go into the Mr. Olympia. So they're pumping up. And they're arguing backstage about who's going to go out first. Because the guy who goes out second is going to look better. Right. So Sergio's like, you're nobody. I'm Mr. Olympia. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, he's, which he's right at that point, right? Right. And Arnold didn't tell him, you know, I just beat you three weeks ago at the Mr. World. Right, know? but he is Mr. Mr. Olympia. Always he is Mr. Play. Olympia, right. Yes. So but, Arnold finally says, okay, Sergio, you go out first, I'll go out second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. They let, he let Sergio go out second. Oh, okay, so Arnold okay. goes out first. And you got to understand, too, the New York fans were big Sergio fans. There, it was a, mostly a mixed crowd in the uh, audience. A lot of uh, African Americans, a lot of right. Spanish people, and they liked Sergio. Sergio was their hero. Sure. He was also three time Mr. Olympia. He was the reigning Mr. Olympia. So the crowd was really for Sergio. Arnold comes out and he gets a good he gets good applause, but then Sergio comes out, the place goes crazy. Sergio looked amazing that night. He was huge, but he was a little too smooth. Yeah. So then they have the pose down between Arnold and Sergio. So they're posing down and they're posing, posing, posing. Crowd's going crazy. And you got to remember, this is when the pose down first started. They just started this like two years, a year okay. before this. So it really wasn't organized. It was just sort of free for all. <laughs> so Arnold does a back shot. And he turns around to Sergio and he goes, hey, Sergio, I'm beat. Let's get out of here. Sergio oh, goes, okay. Sergio starts to walk off the stage. He starts going down the stairs. The crowd starts booing. So Arnold stops. And in a minute, he goes, hey, Sergio, what are you doing? Come on back, you know. <laughs> so he totally... <laughs> <laughs> totally messed them up, but he, he didn't plan it just the way, you know, yeah, it just, just, just came out, out that way, right, yeah. So Sergio comes back, Sergio looks like a loser, Yeah. you know. So anyways, it was very, very close, the judges had to go backstage to decide who was going to win, and anyways, Arnold wins his first Mr. Olympia, Sergio takes second, and uh, Arnold that year won the Mr. Universe in NABA, he won the Mr. World in the AU, and he also won the Mr. Olympia in the IVB, so he did the Triple Crown winning three championships in three different organizations. Wow, so. wow. And then, so what, now, what happened? Because the following year, it was like a, it was like a wash. What, 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 Sergio got suspended? Is that what happened? 
Yeah, Joe Weider really wanted to make the IFB a bigger organization. And back then, the NABA universe was actually bigger than the IFPB. Oh. So Joe Weider said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have a new rule that states if you're an IFBB athlete and you compete in another contest outside the organization, if you do NABA or AAU or anything else, we are going to suspend you for one year. You'll be suspended from the IFPB. So Sergio was training under Arthur Jones that year, the Nautilus guy. Right. And they decided to do the NABA Mr. Universe because Bill Pearl – who was already a three-time Mr. Universe, he was a legend in the sport, Bill Pearl announced to everybody in Iron Man Magazine, he said, I'm doing my last contest at 41 years old, the NABA Universe, and if anybody wants to beat me, this is a challenge to anyone, come to the NABA Universe in 1971, and you'll have a chance to beat me, this is going to be my last contest, I'm going to be at my best. Right. So Arthur Jones had a beef with Bill Pearl about something, about some equipment or something. Right. He really wanted to see Bill Pearl lose. So he got Sergio under his wing. <laughs> he was kind of training Sergio. And um, he wanted Sergio to go in and beat Bill Pearl. So they went there. And Arnold wanted, of course, to win the NABA Universe, too, because he was already a four-time NABA Universe champion. Right. He wanted to be a five-time NABA Universe champion. He wanted to go and win it again. Yeah. Joe Weider wouldn't let him do it. He said, no, you can't do it. You have to compete. You can't compete in the NAB anymore. You just have to compete with the IFBB. If you go in the NAB universe, we have to suspend you. We can't do it. So Arnold, unfortunately, said, okay, you know, I can't, I can't compete in the 71 NAB universe. So Sergio goes over, and he loses to Bill Pearl because, again, he's too smooth. Yeah. Bill Pearl beats him. A week later, they have the Mr. Uni or the Mr. Olympia in Paris, France. Serge Nubre was the promoter. Okay. And... Arnold goes over. Sergio actually comes over to Paris. Yeah. And they tell him, Sergio, you can't compete. You know, you're suspended because you competed in NABA the week before. Yeah. So Arnold goes in the show. He looked unbelievable. He looked way better than the year before. He was bigger. He was more ripped. His legs were really brought up a lot. And he went in unopposed. There was nobody in how, the show. How stupid was that of them back then? I mean, they, oh, it was ridiculous. I mean, it was, I mean, the uh, fans would have been biting at the bit to see those two against yeah, each other. Yeah. Who do you think would have won? You think, Arnold is, would, you think Arnold would have beat him again? I think so. I think so. But Sergio looked a lot better than he did the week before when he lost to Bill Pearl. He lost a lot of water. He was much harder. Yeah. And they let Sergio guest pose, but they wouldn't let him go up against Oh, really? Him. That's weird. Yeah. Oh, it's so stupid. I know. Yeah. So, so the fans lost a huge opportunity, not only to see Arnold versus Sergio again, they also lost the opportunity to see Arnold versus Bill Pearl. Versus anyone, basically. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Arnold, Arnold didn't pose down against everyone. one person. Yeah. Yeah. So you had they, Arnold unopposed, and then Sergio's guest posing, and they never got to stand next to each other. On they the never stage. got to stand next to each other. So wow. stupid. Wow. And what happened? And then the following year, they're back on stage against each other again, right? Yeah. So the next year, Sergio's suspension is lifted. He's allowed to go back into the Olympia. They go to Essen, Germany. Um, they have the Mr. America, the IFBB Mr. America, Mr. World, like two weeks before the Olympia. Right. Arnold's there, and he guest poses, and he looks way off. He's smooth. Yeah. He's got two weeks to get in shape. He goes to Essen, Germany. He looks good, but he said he was a little off. He's about five pounds off. We have those pictures, too, uh, for the, the 72 of Olympia. Yeah. Sergio goes in looking unbelievable. This is the best he's ever looked in his career. He's still got that tiny waist, huge, bigger than ever, but now he's ripped. Now he's, like, really hard. Best condition ever Sergio's been in. So they go to the pre-judging. It's going to be really, really tight. Serge Nubre's in the contest. Frank Zane was doing his first Olympia. Right. Franco was doing his first Olympia. There was five guys in it, which was the most amount of guys that Mr. Olympia's had in the yeah. five years since yeah, it started. Serge Nubre, yep. Yeah. yeah, so it's a really great show. So here's what happened. They go to the pre-judging, and they don't have a theater for the pre-judging. They have to do the pre-judging in another building. So it's not on stage. They're, they're actually standing against a wall in a regular room. <laughs> <laughs> so Arnold... They're like in the bathroom somewhere with a bunch yeah, of judges right. like sticking their head in the door, you know. They don't even know where to go to do the prejudging. Right. So Arnold, Arnold suggests, let's do it in this room. And he said the reason he did that was because the walls were darker. Right. So Arnold's white, Sergio's black. He figured he would stand out more right, yeah. against the wall. <laughs> So Arnold's such a strategist, right? And everything yeah, he does, he suggests. He's always thinking ahead. Yeah. So anyways, Arnold ends up beating him. Uh, Sergio said that at the night show, the, the place was going crazy for Sergio. Right. And he said that uh, they had the guys lined up to go on stage 
And the guy who was in the first place was the guy who was going to win. Yeah. They had Sergio at the front of the line. Oh, really? And then Sergio said right before they went out, they moved him back behind Arnold. Oh, uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. But every bodybuilder who was there, Frank Zane, um, all the guys that were there, they all said Sergio should have won. That, that was wow. a really, really controversial Mr. Olympia. Even Arnold in his book said if he was a judge, he probably would have put Sergio in first. Wow. It, it, what's interesting, John, is that you know back then, a lot of people you know see Arnold as like such a hero and everything like that. People, Arnold was like the bad guy almost. Like people wanted to see these other guys beat Arnold. You know, they wanted to see him lose. You know, they liked Sergio. He was the working man's bodybuilder. You know? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, Arnold was. Uh, you know, he was the king of bodybuilding as promoted by Weeder in Weeder's magazine, yeah. of course. Right. So he had a lot of fans and stuff. But yeah, he was a strategist and he would do whatever it took to win. Yeah. So what it, was that? Pretty much it for Sergio after that. Mentally, did we have to Arnold beat him at that show? Was he kind of through? I mean. He still well, Sergio was really, really pissed off now. He, he yeah. thought that Weeder uh, wanted Arnold to win, and he had no chance. You know, he just thought it was very political. He thought he had the better body. And, you know, me growing up in Chicago, I could tell you when I was younger, I used to see Sergio at these contests. He used to come. Sometimes he would guest pose, or he would always be there, like, at selling his posters or whatever. Right. And all those old-school bodybuilders from Chicago, they always believed Sergio was the greatest. I mean, sure. every one of them said... He got screwed by Weeder, and he should have beat Arnold, and Arnold never should have beat him. If you look at the videotape from that 72 Olympia, Arnold was, I think, maybe a little bit harder than Sergio. He appeared to be. Sergio looks great in the pictures. Um, the, the problem Sergio had was as hard of a worker as he was out, offside, off the stage, you know, with his working at his job or working hard in the gym, he wasn't very disciplined when it came to posing. Like he would hit an upper body shot – and he would leave his legs unflexed. Oh, really? You know, or he would pose too fast. He wasn't really a great poser. Yeah. Where Arnold really perfected his posing, he sure. made sure every pose he did was technically perfect. Like right. his three-quarter back shot was perfect. His front double bicep shot was perfect. Yeah. He looked at the flaw. He, he used to watch, Arnold used to watch films of Sergio posing. Uh -huh. And you know how this is, Dave. When, we, when bodybuilders do a posing routine, we typically follow the same pattern. We'll do... This pose followed right. by this pose, followed by, you know, everybody does it. I used to do it. I'm sure all the bodybuilders sure. do it. So Arnold would watch Sergio and he would say, okay, if he hit his overhead myth pose, he would usually follow that up with a most muscular. Right. So Arnold would strategize and think, okay, when he does that pose, I know he's going to do this pose next, so I'll do this pose instead. Right. Or Arnold would do faster posing, so he would do three poses for every one pose that Sergio did. <laughs> he analyzed this stuff and he figured out ways to beat Sergio and he had to because Sergio was so genetically gifted, this guy was almost impossible to beat. Right. The only way you could beat Sergio was he had to beat himself. He yeah. had to either screw up on his diet or he had to like do some stupid things during his posing <laughs> and that's the only way you could really beat Sergio. He, Sergio was the greatest. I think in Arnold's career, Sergio was the guy he feared the most. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, because he, he legitimately could lose at any moment to him if he was, if yeah, he was 100%. Way, way more competitive than Serge Dubre or Ferrigno or Franco or anybody else. Right, right. That, that, that's why Arnold is the greatest, because he figured out a way to yeah. beat a Absolutely. guy who was actually better than him, you know? Yeah. So, so the following year, in 1973, Sergio was really pissed off at Arnold and at Weider. There was a contest called the Mr. International Contest that used to be held in Tijuana, Mexico every year. And all the bodybuilders would go there. And one of the reasons the bodybuilders would go, of course, was to get their drugs from Tijuana. Oh, <laughs> shit, yeah. <laughs> they, would, they would travel to Tijuana, get all their stuff, and then go back. But they would compete. Eddie Sylvester, who was actually the first Mr. Universe winner in the IFBB in 1950, I think, he was the promoter of the contest. And uh, Eddie had these huge trophies. I mean, these things were like, they were like 100 pounds each. They were right. just these intricate, they were like pieces of art. So he would give out these huge trophies, and uh, a lot of people won that contest. Franco won that contest. Arnold won that contest. Yeah. I think Frank Zane won the contest. Boyer Co. So that year, Sergio decides to go in it. He goes into the Mr. International contest. Okay. Frank or uh, Arnold, Franco, and uh, Joe Weider all go to watch it. Sergio gets up there and he poses, and it's all Mexican crowd. You know, it's in Tijuana, Mexico. Sure. Sergio challenges Arnold from the from the stage. He goes, come on up on stage and pose down against me. You know, because he knew Betty Sylvester ran a, a clean contest. He yeah. wasn't going to cheat. You know, right. He had his judges. It wasn't sure. Weider's judges. He was going to do it right. 
And he's like, mano a mano, come on up here, let's go. And so Arnold wanted to go up there, and Joe Weider said, no, no, don't go up there. Don't go up there. He wouldn't <laughs> let him compete. So well, Frank Arnold wasn't all tanned up, I'm sure. Well, there was not that they were tanning anyway, but right. he probably wasn't ready, you know. Well, the Mr. Olympia was only a couple weeks away. Oh, it was, was okay. All right. So Franco goes in the contest against Sergio, and they, they call it a draw. Oh, really? And both the trophies, and... Anyways, after that, Sergio had just ruined ruined it with Weeder. Weeder wrote these really bad uh, articles in the magazines, bodybuilding's worst night ever, and it was just really bad blood between Sergio and Joe Weeder. And uh, of course, Sergio was uh, suspended, could not compete anymore. And <laughs> just when we later, thought Lee Priest was the most suspended guy, I think it might have been Sergio. Yeah, Sergio and, and Joe Weeder had really bad blood. So three weeks later, the Mr. Olympia contest takes place in New York City. Arnold wins his fourth Olympia. Uh, Franco and Serge Nubre are in the show. Uh -huh. But what's important about that contest was Charles Gaines and George Butler went to that contest, and they, they photographed it for the book Pumping Iron, uh, which came out one year later. Yeah. Now, if Sergio would have been in that contest, who knows? I mean, Sergio could have got some great publicity. Sure. Maybe Sergio would have been in the movie Pumping Iron. Yeah. You know, it that really, would have been really a much was, better, uh, you know, battle. You know, Sergio and Lou Ferrigno versus Arnold. You know what I mean? I think that would have been yeah. more compelling. You know? Oh yeah, because if you think about Sergio, Sergio had incredible charisma. Anybody who knew him back then, this guy was like Arnold. He was very cocky. He was yeah. very arrogant. Unbelievable charisma. He was a great dresser. Yeah. You know, I used to see him in Chicago, and he would come with these high-waisted white pants <laughs> with the bell bottoms, the white shoes that. He had a red shirt that was buttoned down to here. He had these big gold medallions. I <laughs> heard a story that Mr. T copied off of Sergio. He probably did. You're right. You're right. Because they were both from Chicago. Yeah. Uh, Mr. T used to work at a bar called Dingbats in Chicago. Uh -huh. uh, he had the big gold bracelets on and stuff. Sergio was unbelievable. I mean, he was such a character. He had the earrings. You know, he was just amazing. He was an amazing physique. And he was one of a kind. Really one of the great legends in the sport. Well, John, uh, I, I love the stories. You know, I, I think people don't know the history of the sport. I didn't know all the stories. I knew some of them, but I didn't know all of them. So it's kind of nice to get that out there and, and to learn what – there was a lot of rivalry. There was a lot of, you know, uh, political maneuvering back then. And, and even though the money wasn't really there than there is today, yeah. you know, the, for the bodybuilders, it was still, you know, the most important thing because, let's face it, we do this stuff for free, you know, and essentially they weren't yeah. competing for free back then. There was no, there was no monetary reward like there is today, and uh, the, it was the politics, and it was you know business as usual, as we say. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. It was, it, the politics were crazy back then, and uh, there was a lot of drama and, and a lot of uh, a lot of great competitions. And two of the greatest bodybuilders ever. I mean, Arnold and Sergio were like the Ali Frazier yeah. or any other rivalry you can think of in any other sports. I mean. These guys were the greatest, both at the greatest uh, peak of their career, competing against each other. It was really an amazing time to see two phenomenal, genetically gifted athletes competing at the top of their game against each other for those years. It was just a shame that they, they had to keep suspending poor Sergio yeah, <laughs> for, it, for it, stupid it stuff, too, you know. Right. We really lost some great opportunities yeah. to see Arnold and Sergio compete against each other more. Yeah. Um, it, it really is a shame. Actually, it would have really been great. If Sergio would have beat Arnold in 72, yeah. and then they would have came back the next year. Because if you look at Arnold from 72 to 73, he improved so much. His two best years were 73 and 74. And I really think it was because he almost lost to Sergio in 72. You're probably right. You're probably right. Yeah. So if they would have came back in 73, no. it would have been an epic, epic battle. Well, John, thanks again for joining us and uh, giving us a little historical lesson. Uh, what's I'm going right. on with you? Uh, I know you got some uh, stuff you're promoting. Yeah, I'm really starting off the new year right, Dave. Uh, I, as you know, I've been helping people with their uh, online consultations. I've been helping mostly middle-aged guys, but I'm starting to go back to my roots and uh, get back into bodybuilding competition. So I'm helping a lot of people now get ready for national contests. I've helped a few at the end of last year, and I'm really getting in, into it this year. Um, they're calling me like the natural guru. I'm helping these guys yeah, I get like ready it. for contests, you know. So, you know, I've been training for 42 years now. I've done it all from starting off as a 135-pound kid, skinny, bulking up to 230, doing that natural. So I've got that experience behind me, how to gain muscle without using drugs, just with training and nutrition. And then I've competed in over 50 contests, and I've won the biggest natural shows in the world. I won the first Natural Olympia. I won three times Natural Universe. 
So I'm going back to my roots and I'm helping people get ready for competitions and I'm really loving it. It's a great thing. I got a new website called johnhansonfitness.com and uh, I offer a lot of different programs for both off season, losing fat, uh, getting ready for competitions. Excellent. And I'm also, also doing a, um, a 12 week fitness challenge that starts on January 13th. Okay. So I, I'm sorry, January 20th. They have to sign up by January 13th. They will have me as a coach for three months and I will help them for three months. And uh, whoever wins at the end of the contest, we're going to have three winners. They will get supplements. They will get my DVDs. They will get my books. And it's going to be a great challenge. And I'll, I'll get a chance to work with a lot of people. So, yeah, I'm really excited about next year. JohnHansonFitness.com if anyone's interested in that. We just put the website up there and people will uh, be able to go over there and uh, sign up with you. Good luck with that, John, and uh, we'll uh, be doing another one of these historical uh, perspectives on the bodybuilding world probably in the coming weeks. Beautiful. Thank you, Dave. All right. And guys, that's going to take us to the end of another episode. Live with, I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.